Peter, James, and John with the disciples that he took to the mountaintop. And it bringeth them up to a high mountain apart. And, and, and you notice that Jesus Christ, whenever he wanted to communicate something that was important, he would always take them from the masses, he'd take them up into a high mountain apart from the crowd mm -hmm. where he would want to uh, communicate with them. Oh, we just played that hymn today. In the upper room. Every once in a while, we had to get in the upper room. Um, I used to have an old saying, they said, where you been at? I've been up in the cloud there. I'll get to that a little later on. Every once in a while, we got to get up in the cloud. We got to get, we got to get up in, in the presence of God Almighty Himself, you know, not in, in all these things that go down on the earthly realm is one thing, but every once in a while we got to get up in the cloud. We got to get up in a high place. We got to get up to a place where we can hear God's word and that God can speak with us. And verse two says, and and He was transfigured before them, and His face did shine as the sun, and His remnant was white as the light, as light. Now, what we're saying is that he was transfigured. In other words, when he took these disciples of his up into the mountain, he pulled back his humanity and revealed his divinity, that who he was, the, 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 the son of the living God. And so he, he allowed them to see truly he, who he was. That's what they call a transfiguration. In other words, they were able to see the real Jesus Christ, not the one that was covered and human flesh and blood, but the, the spirit that was inside of the body of Jesus. And he revealed himself to them. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now Moses and Elias is of the Old Testament. It's two symbols. They were symbolic of the uh, people of, or men of God in the Old Testament. Yes. Moses in, in Eli, Moses represented the law of the Old Testament. Moses was of the tribe of Levi. Him and along with his brother Aaron, they laid out and they administered the law in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament was based on the law and the prophets. Elijah represented the, one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. But they had long <coughs> been gone. They had long physically died. And they were no longer among the living in our uh, 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 reality. They had passed over to the other side. But all of a sudden, they appeared with Jesus on this high mountain. This is called the transfiguration. And it said here, in verse 3, they behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with Jesus. Huh? Mm -hmm. Not no smoke, or not no vapor. But they were there talking with Jesus. Moses, they never did find Moses' grave. He couldn't go over to the promised land, but he, they know that he, he was somewhere. God took him somewhere, and Moses went through death channel to get up on this mountain with Jesus Christ. Amen. And we know that Elijah swayed low, sweet chariot, Amen. coming to carry me home. Elijah went, a cloud of fire came down and, and swept Elijah up, and he carried him to the presence of God Almighty. Both of them are the Old Testament, left out any Old Testament, but here they were on this mountain in the New Testament with Jesus, talking with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 there, Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, or Elijah, talking with Jesus. Then Peter, then Peter's us. Mm -hmm. See, Peter's us. We always think we got the all solution to everything. You, you know what I mean? Then that? Peter, then old big mouth Peter. Yeah, we call him. Peter just blabbed in the first thing. And while I'm on this, sure. <clears throat> we have to be careful. Because the old wise man said, you are the, we ought to think ten times before we open our mouths and we just might be right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to be careful to just blurt anything out of our mouths. I have, we have to catch ourselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just blurt anything out of our mouth and, we, 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 and once you get out of the mouth, you can't take it back in. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So old Peter here yeah, answered, Peter answered, said, uh, I said, look to Jesus. Now, he's going to talk to Jesus. Now, here is, here is, here is the, uh, um, uh, Moses, mm -hmm. and, and here is Elijah talking with Jesus. Now, Peter is going to butt right in. He's, in verse 4, he said, And then answered Peter and, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou will, if thou will let us make thee three tabernacles. Let's build three churches up on this mountain here. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. 
if it be your will. It's good we here. Peter said, I'm glad I'm here to be able to see this. I see Moses. I see Elijah. I see my Lord and Savior. Now let's build a three church. We'll build one. You go, you go on and say, one for thee, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah or Elijah. We're going to build three tabernacles or three cathedrals, three churches up on this mountain where it's been revealed to us here. Yeah. So now Peter want to take over and want to do something that God didn't even ask him to do. Oh, Jesus Christ took him up on that mountain so he could be a witness. They were like, not to go try to build and build a new religion or a religious organization. He just wanted Peter to know something. He wanted to reveal the truth to Peter. And then verse 5, he said, while he, while he yet speak, uh, uh, behold, uh, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And, 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 and this cloud, you got to really underline this cloud, this bright cloud that overshadowed them. It was a cloud from uh, Moses when the children of Israel come, come out of Egypt and, and they were out in the wilderness. It was a cloud that God hid himself by day and it was fire by night. Huh? And wherever that cloud showed up in the Old Testament, huh? Yeah. Moses would instruct them, this is where we're going to set up camp. And they would stay there and worship God until that cloud moved to another thing. And they said that cloud, the glory cloud, or the Shekinah cloud, represent God wrapping himself in a cloud so that man couldn't look on him. And every once in a while, the, the tabernacle that Moses built, the, the cloud would come down into the holies of holies of the tabernacle. And God would be a presence among his people, huh? Yo, y'all know what I'm saying, huh? That cloud we're talking about. Way back in the Old Testament, that cloud we're talking about. Elijah, when he was fighting Ahab and Jezebel and the false prophet, Elijah went into a cloud and God talked to him in a cloud there. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he was baptized by John on the Jordan River, few verses back in this book here, when he, when he, when he baptized, he said, when he came out of the water, the cloud appeared over top of Jesus and where he was baptized at. And out of that, said, Behold my son in whom I am well pleased. That glory cloud, some people call it the Shekinah glory cloud yes. of God Almighty. Yes. So this cloud showed up on the mountain here. You had the disciples, three disciples of the, of the New Testament, and took the prophet and, 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 and the, and, and the uh, lawgiver of the New Testament, and Jesus standing in the midst of them. Mm. Great God, now on this high place right. that he was having this, this conversation with. Mm. The Old Testament, huh? And the New Testament is there to bear witness, huh? James, John, and Peter, they, 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 they're all there together, connected with Jesus Christ. Right. And it goes on in verse 5 here. Because he says, huh? And while, while he yet speak, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. God, they covered them. God, they covered them, huh? And behold, a voice out of the cloud, huh? Talk to me, somebody, huh? Which said, this is my, <laughs> great God, I'm there, huh? This is my beloved son, great, huh? Earlier when John, he was with John, he said, here, he, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But over here, he said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Then he said, hear ye him. Huh? In other words, Moses was okay, huh? And Elijah was okay in the Old Testament. And even these fellows, we got the New Testament. James and these fellows, along with Peter, they're okay. But I want you to hear ye him, because this is my beloved son. And out of him is going to come the word that will save and sacrifice it and save your life. If you hear this word to come out of the mouth of our Lord and save you. Jesus Christ, huh? And when the disciples were sick, when the disciples heard him, they fell on their faces and were, were so afraid. They were afraid because they realized it was God who erected himself in a cloud and he was able to communicate to them. Because the book tells us that we can't look on God with these natural eyes without dying because God is too holy for us sinners like us to look on him. So he hid himself in cloud here. And the cloud was in the Old Testament, the certain Old Testament, but up on the mountain here, huh? The Spirit of God, huh, had, had, had jumped from fire, had jumped from cloud, had jumped from the burning bush that Moses saw. Now the Spirit of God was in his son, because it was in human flesh. It was wrapped by human flesh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, huh? So that's why God said, beloved son, in whom I have well pleased, hear ye him. Jesus came and touched him. Uh, verse 6 said, and, and the disciples hearing, and they fell on their faces, they were afraid, so afraid. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus came and touched them. Great God, I'm like, huh? He touched me, huh? We all in here because some kind of way he touched us, every one of us. Some kind of way he, he pulled on the strings of our heart. He touched us and let us know, huh? I can't make it in this thing on my own. I got to have a God. I got to have a Lord. I got to have somebody that I can count on. I got to have a friend, and a friend indeed is in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he touched them, huh? And he said, Arise and be not afraid. Great God, why? Because they were under his protection, yes. even in the presence of God Almighty himself. Because he selected for them to go up on the mountain with him. Huh? He selected that he would come and show some things to him that they couldn't see down below with the, with the crowd. Every once in a while, you're going to have to get up out of the crowd. Huh? Yes. You have to get up from the foot of the mountain man, and come up, to, come up a little higher great God, so that God can talk to you. Right. And when they lifted up their eyes, verse 8, they saw no man, save Jesus Christ only. Huh? Jesus Christ only, not the prophets, not the disciples of the New Testament, but it's all about Jesus. Because everything back in the Old Testament was leading to Jesus Christ. Huh? Great God from time. And everything in the New Testament was looking back to Jesus Christ. So before Jesus, everything was looking forward to him. And after the crucifixion and the resurrection, everything looking back to Calvary High. But it's all about Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And as they came down, from the mountain. Mm -hmm. Jesus charged them saying, verse 9, mm -hmm. Jesus charged them saying, huh? Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Great mm -hmm. God, he's like, huh? He was talking, the book said he was talking uh -huh. in the early year, huh? So him talking, huh? Mm -hmm. With Moses and Elijah. Mm -hmm. Great God, like, Moses, Moses had a law. And Moses was telling him, look, man, look, 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 look here, we're going to have this law, and we're going to shed all kind of blood. We're going to shed the blood of bulls, we're going to shed the blood of goats, we're going to shed the blood of animals and everything else to spare the people back there. But they still sinning. they still on their way to hell. We're going to do all we could in the Old Testament there, huh? We're going to put the law to them because the law was holy, was to make them holy and righteous before a holy God. But they were always breaking the law. And in breaking the law, we had to sacrifice the animal after animal, the animal after animal, year after year, decade after year. We, we tried, but we couldn't get them, huh? Because the law was the, we couldn't save them. The law could only make them realize that they need a Savior, and the Savior is you, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and then, and then, and then Elijah looked. We prophesied, huh? Isaiah prophesied 600 years before he came, huh? See, we can't get it yet, but one's going to come, huh? You know, of a virgin girl. And one's going to come on scene, and Elijah said, we prophesied, and we prophesied, and we prophesied, and we prophesied. But yet the people didn't want to hear us. So they said, it's upon you, Jesus, huh? Great God, said, huh? If humanity is going to be saved, great, it's all in your hand now. That's why I say, hear ye him, huh? Because all the law and all the law givers of the Old Testament couldn't save the people, huh? And all the prophecy of the Old Testament couldn't open their eyes so they could save themselves. Huh? But now, huh, it's in Jesus' hand. Uh, uh, Philippi, it was called Philippi. And that, that's where they had all that in front of him. They, they had a special place that was uh, uh, made for the Greek and the Roman and all the false gods. They were at the bottom of the hill down there. It was a special place that they came and, and they worshiped all these false gods. But a, a whole new perspective. They went, but he had to take them up out of there. And down at the bottom of the hill, people were still worshiping false gods. But that's not important. The reason he told them, don't tell nobody, because when he come down on the hill, he hid his strength for Jerusalem. He hid his strength for that cross, huh? He had nobody in mind when he took his disciples down off this hill after he revealed himself. He marched into Jerusalem, and in there, that way, he took them up on that old rugged cross, on that hill called Galgotha, where he saved all of humanity, and he paid the price for both you and me, huh? When he come down on that mountain, he marched himself to Galgotha. And because why? Because the only Savior we had was in Jesus Christ. So then God said, He said, God said, This is my beloved Son. Then He goes on and said, In whom I am well pleased, huh? Hear ye Him. Because what was in Jesus, huh? Was the Spirit of God Himself, huh? God had been in clouds. God had been on burning bushes. God had been and showed up in all kinds of ways to man, trying to warn man to, to, to be right, huh? But now God has shown up in human flesh. 
And as my father said, God is now in Christ, huh? So when, 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 he, when Christ opened his mouth, it was God in him speaking to the people, huh? But he would spare the people because they could look on a human being and not die, but they couldn't see the spirit that was in the, in the human being that were looking on, huh? And, and so, 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 so Jesus began to do his work to save and bring back salvation mm -hmm. to all of humanity. Mm -hmm. This is why he's so beloved. He's beloved of God, but he's also beloved of man. So he's not only beloved of God himself, but he's beloved of man, huh? Because yes. he is the word. He is the, the, the centerpiece, huh, yes. of this Bible that we preach. It's all about Jesus Christ. Way, way back from the beginning, when he made uh, the first, he created the first Adam and created the first Eve. From that point right down to the day, it's all about Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, yes. huh? Yes. God knows that he is one yes. that's worthy. Great God of God, huh? To be served. He's worthy to be acknowledged, huh? He's worthy to be loved. Yes. But not that in closing and summary, every one of you that's in the house today, yes. when, when you went to the water, when you made your mind, when the unction of the Spirit hit you and you were led by the power of the Holy Spirit and you went to the water there, God looked down on his, on his throne in heaven, scooted up on his throne and looked down, huh? The, huh? My beloved, yes. my beloved child, my beloved child, behold my beloved child, in whom I am well pleased. Why? Because we obeyed the Father yes. to be able to pick up and attach our faith yes. and our destiny to Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord and our Savior. Amen. If you have gotten anything from this message, yes. and if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Amen. we give you this moment in time to make that decision. And as only you can make that decision. God give you the willpower to give you the mind and the spirit to make that decision on your own. And if you decide to make it, can nobody stop you. And if you decide not to make it, can nobody make you do it, huh? It's all in your, it's all in your, your decision that you make. But hear this, huh? Where your soul will end up will depend on the decision that you make. We ask this and all other uh, blessings and all other knowledge in, 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 in the, the, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless thee, and may the Lord keep thee, and may the Lord keep thee strong. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen, Amen. Amen. Amen.